I'm going to talk to you today about how to prepare to go through the Great Tribulation. Now, I'm going to just tell you right at the, at the very beginning of this thing, I am not somebody that believes in the post-trib rapture. I am what would be called a pre-trib rapture uh, preacher and defender. Uh, I have gone over, over many years, over the course of, oh, 11 years now, and I have answered every single one of the arguments that post-tribbers come out with. Um, I will militantly defend the pre-trib rapture doctrine. Um, properly called the catching up before the time of Jacob's trouble. Um, so if you are actually looking for the truth and you've, you're believing that the body of Christ is going to go through this time period and you're genuinely saved, and, but you're looking for the truth, you're open-minded, then I will put a playlist at the end of over 140, I think it is right now, studies that I've done over the years, answering questions, and going over all the arguments for the post rapture, the John Nelson Darby before 1830 thing, and and the you know the Jesuits created it, and the the preacher rapture, and there's no secret rapture. There's no I've gone over all of that stuff. Okay, so uh, don't put a bunch of stuff down in the comments that you know you can prove that it's wrong and whatever. If you're looking for truth, watch the videos. All right, but I, what I realize is I realize that no matter what I do, no matter what I say. No matter how many of these arguments I answer, there are people that are bound and determined to go through this time. There are lost people that are not counting on Jesus Christ, you know, for salvation. And again, salvation there is right now it's two thirds complete. Um, he's your your soul has been uh, born again. Your spirit is quickened, but your body of flesh is still corruptible. Uh, at the catching up when the "Quote unquote rapture happens, that's the redemption of your body, spoken of in Ephesians chapter one, the redemption of the purchased possession. Again, a lot of posties don't get that. But if you believe that you're going to go into this time period, then I'm going to give you a couple things that you need to start preparing for right now. You see, I'm actually doing this in a spirit of love. Um, I get a little bit militant with some of the post-trib stuff, but I'll do this in a spirit of love because, quite frankly, most post-trib preachers are not actually preparing their people to go into this time period. It's not there. And I'll talk more about that as we continue, but I just want you to I want you to think about some things. I want you to start in your mind. I want a process to begin in your mind where you start to say to yourself, if I actually believe I'm going to be seeing the events of the book of Revelation beginning in chapter 6 and going through this what many call the Great Tribulation. It's properly called the Time of Jacob's Trouble or Daniel's 70th week. Great Tribulation is a description of what's going to happen. It's never used as a title in your King James Bible. If you look at the whole context of which the Tribulation or the Great Tribulation appears, it's always a description. Okay? So, um, or, you know, yeah, I'm not going to go into all that stuff. Again, I've covered it in other subjects or other sermons. But here's the thing that you need to start thinking about. Okay, and please do examine yourself on this. Um, there's two things that you can do when the Antichrist shows up, right? Because I think everybody would agree, whether you're post pre, uh, post trib full the whole way through the seven years, or post trib pre wrath, you go through half of it, or mid trib, you know, you go through half and there's a slightly different variation, or pre trib or whatever. Whatever you are, the trigger event that I think we could all agree on is when the Antichrist shows up. Okay, that's what starts it. Right? He confirms the covenant. You say, oh, the peace treaty between the Jews and the Muslims. There's no scripture to support that. Okay, It doesn't say that in Daniel chapter 9, I believe it is. Um, it says he confirms the covenant. All right? And I believe and teach and preach that it's the Roman Catholic Church, because that's who the Antichrist is part of. It's, you know, the woman rides the beast, her collars are purple and scarlet, Revelation 17. It's clearly the Roman Catholic Church. Um, again, I've had Plenty of studies to prove that. But when the, con the covenant is confirmed between the Catholic Church and the Jews, and I believe that that covenant a stipulation is going to be the Catholics get to build, you know, take part in the building of this temple, the third temple. And part of the agreement then is, okay, what do the Jews get? If the Jews give all this land over to the Roman Catholic Church, and they already have, by the way, um, that's, that's already, there's a lot of real estate in Jerusalem that the Catholic Church already owns. Okay, they have the headquarters of the Knights of the Equestrian Order. You can look all this stuff up. They already have a lot of the, the land, a lot of the real estate in Jerusalem is already given over to the Vatican. 
Okay, but what's what's the carrot that the Vatican dangles before the eyes of the Jews, the Zionist Jews, and they are very evil too, by the way. I defend the nation of Israel, but I'm not going to say that the Zionist Jews are not evil. They are very evil. Uh, there's a lot of them that are into Freemasonry and things like that, high-level Freemasons. They're very, very covetous with their money practices and things. There's some very wicked Jews right now. That's the reason for the time of Jacob's trouble, Jacob being Israel. But what's the carrot that the Vatican is dangling before the eyes of the Jews? What, what would cause the Jews to sign a covenant with the Antichrist and the Catholic Church, in other words? The destruction of Islam. Think about it. The Antichrist shows up and he goes out conquering and to conquer. Who's he going out to conquer? Islam. And there's a thing actually called the Winslow Plan where they talk about the destruction of Islam. Uh, dropping nukes on Mecca and Medina during the Ramadan feast thing and whatever else to wipe out most of the Muslims. And the ones that would be left would go crazy and they'd be out killing people and whatever else. And the Antichrist would go out and make war with them. So this thing's already in, in, in the works. It's already being planned. This isn't just my theories or whatever else. It's, it's already in the works. Okay? But here's your two options. Antichrist shows up. He confirms the covenant. Now you have two things that you can do. You can go out as a martyr fairly quickly. Or you can survive to the end. Right? And here's the, that's the whole point of the study here. Not even really a sermon. I'm just going to go through some things that you need to think about. If you're planning to go through the whole thing, if you're going to go out as a martyr, well, then you really don't have to worry about anything. You're going to get killed fairly quickly. They're going to say you pledge your allegiance to the Antichrist. You can boldly stand up and say, no, I do not. I refuse. I will not take his mark. I will not worship the beast or his image. And they will say, okay, take him out, cut their head off. Okay? You don't have to worry about surviving anything. All right? You're going to go out pretty quickly. This study is about those who want to survive. Matthew chapter 24, verse 13 says, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Okay, there will be people that endure to the end, that survive the whole thing. Here's what you need to think about. Okay, number one is your job. Are you prepared mentally to leave your job when the Antichrist shows up? Because just as sure as you live and breathe, I don't care how small a job, place that you work, whatever else, you're going to have to be required to take the mark. Okay, that's the requirement. All right? Uh, and don't tell me this thing. Of, I've, I've heard people, they say, well, the false prophet, when he shows up, he causes everybody to take the mark. That's true. And they say, well, he shows up three and a half years you know, after the Antichrist is, is revealed. That's not true. All right? Power is given to the Antichrist for the three and a half years there, but it doesn't say that he's there the whole time and then the, the, then the false prophet shows up and causes the mark of the beast. That's going to happen right at the beginning. All right. There's going to be a lot of war and a lot of bad times, uh, financial collapse, you might say, and they're going to have to come out with a new monetary system. Gee, what are they talking about in the news right now? The American dollar is imploding. Donald Trump literally within the last few days said that we need quantitative easing number four. They want to print more money, which is going to mean hyperinflation. The American dollar is the world's reserve currency. It's going to crash. What are they going to do? If they want to preserve all the artificial wealth that they've created over the last 100 years since the creation of the Federal Reserve Bank, they're going to have to keep that system afloat. Well, how do you do that? They say, well, we need to return to the gold and silver standard. Can't happen. There's not enough gold and silver to prop up this $22 trillion debt thing in America. And I think it's, I forget what the statistic was. I just heard, I think it's over $400 trillion worldwide of worldwide debt right now. That's astronomical. You can't even fathom that. There's not that much gold out there. So what are they going to do? They're going to have to make it digital. Digital currency is what's coming. Just like the Bible says, it's going to be a mark of the beast that controls. No man might buy or sell save he that had the mark. All right? In the right hand or in the forehead. So that's going to show up about the same time that the Antichrist shows up. He's going to come in and he's going to bring war and he's also also going to bring solution to the problem of the world's finances. He's going to come in and say, okay, cashless society. Most people don't even pay with cash anymore. It's credit cards and debit cards and whatever other things and, and these uh, e-transfer things and whatever else. I mean, we live in the middle of nowhere up here, northern Maine, and we're going to stores and we're seeing you can, you can check out in grocery stores here in northern Maine with PayPal. 
if you're living in more of a populated area, more city type area, you're probably laughing and saying, well, that's been here for, you know, in our area for years. What's my point? My point is the cashless system is growing and it will be implemented. What are you going to do about your job? Don't tell me that you're going to say, oh, well, I can go to my job and they can pay me and everything else. And it's going to be just cash under the table. Cash is going to be worthless soon, very soon. They print more Federal Reserve notes. Cash is, is just going to be a joke. Hmm. You say, well, I work for myself. Okay, how are your uh, customers going to pay you? What are you going to do? Seriously. I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to mock any post-trib person out there or whatever else. Are you planning to be able to survive for seven years, seven years without an income? How are you going to do it? You say, well, God will provide. Chapter and verse, please. What does the Bible say in the book of Revelation that God provides for the saints? He's going to feed you and things like that. Where does it say that? God takes care of the 144,000 sealed Jews, but it doesn't say a thing about the Gentiles. He makes a full end of all the nations. But he's going to provide for the Christians. They're just going to be in little safety bubbles, just, you know, kind of going around and not experiencing anything, huh? How about banking? How much money do you have in the bank? Are you prepared to get it out? Is it going to be worth anything when you do? If the Antichrist shows up in a week from, just say a week from today, the Antichrist shows up. You're a post-tribber, that's what you believe. Antichrist could show up at any time. It's not the imminent return of Jesus, it's the imminent, you know, appearance of Antichrist. Okay? Antichrist shows up, what are you going to do about your money in the bank? Run in quick and try to do a run on the bank type of thing before a run on the bank happens, you know, we'll say. And you go and you get your money out quick. How long is that money going to be worth anything? You say, well, I'm, 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 I got it outsmarted because, you see, I'm stockpiling cash and gold and silver. And what are you going to do with those? What are you going to do with them? You're going to go to the grocery store and take the, you know, come here, you know, to the guy at the cash register and say, come here. Here, I got, I got $500 in cash. I need to buy these groceries. Oh, yeah, yeah, we'll let you do that. He doesn't want your cash. It's useless. Gold and silver? You think that the government's going to not regulate that? They made it illegal back in the 1920s with the Great Depression. You have to turn in all your gold coins. But they won't do it now. Right. It's interesting. There was a Norfed, um, Bernard von Nothaus, uh, and he made these little coins and stuff and uh, silver coins and whatever else. And they put the guy in federal prison years ago because he was making currency to uh, fight against the Federal Reserve notes or whatever else. And his coins that he minted are actually illegal to own now. So if you take those coins and you go to a coin shop, you walk in, you say, I'd like to have this exchange. They'll say, we have to confiscate these or we can call the police. But they couldn't do that with the rest of the gold and silver coins, right? Turn in your Bible. I just want to show you a verse of scripture real quickly. You say, ah, oh, come on. Now this is crazy. I... I'm, I'm planning, you know, I got all my gold and silver, you know, in reserve and everything else. I'll be all right. I'll be okay. Really? Let me see. I didn't really write any notes for this. Just give me a minute here. I'll find it. Um, uh, it's in the book of James. James chapter 5, verse 1. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come un upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered and the rust of them shall be a witness against you and, she and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped together treasure for the last days. Hmm. People storing up gold and silver and it's worthless? Obviously, gold and silver don't rust. That's obvious, but you know, what's it talking about there? The rest of them shall be a testimony against you. Do you ever hear somebody say, boy, I'm getting out of shape. I, I just, I must really be rusty. Well, your body doesn't rust. What's it mean? It just means it's basically getting useless. Gold and silver that's stockpiled and whatever else is going to be useless in the future. They come out with digital currency that, that you use, utilize with your a mark in your right hand or in your forehead. 
what good is gold and silver going to do? And they can outlaw that stuff and say, you know, we need to we need to fix the economy. And anybody with gold and silver reserves, you can't cash that stuff in. It's illegal. You have to bring it in in so many hours, and we'll give you a credit for it. And if you try to hoard it, you're going to be in trouble, enemy of the state. What are you going to do about banking? Are you preparing? Are you getting ready? See, I believe the Lord's going to be catching me up at some point in time. That last soul gets saved. The last person in the body of Christ is saved. And I'm saying, bye-bye, and we go up. That's why there's Christians in heaven in Revelation 5 before the Antichrist is revealed in Revelation 6. The 24 elders, they're saved, you see, by the blood of the Lamb. They're not, they're not, uh, they're not from, oh, they're just the 12 Jewish patriarchs and the 12 Jewish disciples. Then they wouldn't be from every kindred, people, tongue, nation. Hmm. Save Christians in heaven before the Antichrist is revealed. So I'm looking for Jesus Christ to come. So that's why I'm not preparing and, and getting my money out of the banks and thinking how am I going to overcome the mark of the beast type of stuff. But I'll tell you right now, if all of a sudden I believed that I'm going to go through that time period, I'm going to be preparing. I'd be getting ready to be able to live for seven years without cash, without gold and silver. What are you doing? Number three, how about taxes? This ties in with a later point about your personal property. Um, I own this land right now that, it, that I'm preaching on. Okay? But when the Antichrist shows up, how am I going to pay my property taxes? I might be able to get away and skirt the system for a few years or something like that, but uh, eventually they're going to be coming and kicking me off this land. So I could have gardens out here. I could I can learn all about the wild edibles and this here. And there's an apple tree over there. And I can eat this and I can eat that and whatever else. But it's only going to be good for a few years. And the Bible also says that a third of the trees is, are burned up. And all green grass is burned up. One of the trumpet judgments. Hmm. How are you going to pay your taxes? Housing. The next point here. Do you rent? What are you going to do? Are you ready to walk away from it all? Antichrist shows up. He just confirmed the covenant. <gasps> what am I going to do? Are you ready to be homeless? Do you have the gear for it? Are you in shape enough to be homeless and always on the run? How about if you have a mortgage? Oh boy. How are you going to pay your mortgage? You say, well... I, I got it beat. I have debt-free living. We're debt-free. Okay? I'm debt-free on this land. We own this land outright. But I still have to pay my property tax. Huh. How about transportation? How good a shape are you in, friend? Post-trib friend? How good a shape are you in? You say, well, I got a pretty good vehicle. You're not going to be able to drive it. You're going to get pulled over. Uh, need to read the mark in your hand, please. He's not going to say license and, and registration, please. He's going to say, put your hand up, please. Uh, sir, I'm not able to find a, a scan here. I'm, I'm, I'm scanning. I'm not finding your chip. What are you going to do? Got a bicycle? How good can you ride it? Are you practicing these things? Well, I haven't thought about it. Why not? You're a post-tribber, aren't you? You're going to go through the tribulation, aren't you? Bad times are coming. Lord's not going to catch you up before any of these bad times. You're going to go through it, right? I mean, you, you wouldn't be one of the kind of people that would profess something and not actually carry it out, would you? I believe I'm going through the tribulation. Oh, well, what are you doing to get ready for it? Well, nothing really. Do you really believe the Bible or don't you? How about emergency care? Can you heal yourself? Oh, don't worry, because when the Antichrist shows up and, and there's war and all this other stuff, I got injured, I'm going to go to the hospital. And what do you think is going to happen when you get there? You're going to come in and they're, and they're going to say, uh, hold your hand out. We need to scan, just, you know, get you in, into the computer here, see if, you know, check out your medical records. I don't have a chip. I don't believe it. 
my religious convictions say that I'm not to have a chip. I cannot t do that. And they'll say, oh, we respect your religious convictions. No, they won't. No, they won't. Like the, the They Live movie I saw many, many years ago. And, and they said, we got one that can see. Talking to another watch. We got one that can see. It's going to be, um, oh, oh, you don't have a chip? Oh, okay. Uh, security. We're, we have a, a helpful bunch of people to come here. And the next thing you know, you're being dragged off to some nice padded room and put in a nice straight jacket. And the psychiatrist comes in with a big smile and says, now let's talk about why you haven't had the chip in you yet. Okay, I'm not your enemy, I'm, I'm your friend. It's completely optional, but required. Mm -hmm. Oh, you, you still don't see it our way? I think that maybe you have a chemical imbalance in your brain and you need to be medicated so you'll see things our way. Nurse, please bring in the pills. <laughs> Are you ready? Are you ready? Have a fire on your property, can you put it out? Before they come and take it away because you didn't pay your taxes, you know? Are you really thinking this thing out? Do you really believe in the post-trib rapture? Are you sure you have the right God? Are you sure you have the right system here? My God will provide all your need according to his riches and glory. Uh, uh, really? Um, where's it at in the book of Revelation? I talked to one post-tribber the one time and I said, uh, are you growing all your food right now? No. I said, uh, I, I, I said to him, excuse me, I said, I said, how are you going to provide for your family in the future? He said, well, he, I said, you can't go to the grocery store in the tribulation. He said, yeah, that's true. He said, I think I'm probably going to grow my own food. I said, do you do it right now? No. I said, uh, so let me get this straight. When times are easy right now, and it's not illegal for you to be a Christian, you don't grow food. But boy, when that Antichrist shows up, you're going to start growing food. How about church? Do you go to church? Have a good uh, New Testament local church family? Uh, what are you going to do when the Antichrist shows up? And he confirms the covenant? I'm sure your big, bold 501c3 incorporated pastor is going to at that point stand up and say, Congregation, you have to disobey this man. I've been telling you for years to submit to them, yourself to the government, but for no more, no more. We cannot submit ourselves to the Antichrist. We have to be able to get out there. We have to fight him. And, and, and those of you that don't want to fight him, we're going to go out soul winning this afternoon. We're going to all have our heads cut off by this evening. And the re those the rest of you, head out into the woods. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Big, bold, post-trib pastors, and they're not getting their people ready? Stephen Andersnake with his little after the tribulation thing came out and made all this trouble and everything else and turned so many people away from believing the pre-trib rapture. And he's, he's standing against the border guards. They say, we need to ask you to get out of your vehicle, sir. We need to search your vehicle. I will not. And they break his window and taser him and he's screaming like a little girl and all this stuff. And then he preaches sermons saying you need to submit to the government. And he goes through TSA and he goes through all these other intrusive, invasive things that the government tells him to do. Hey, Anderson, come on over here. Drop your drawers down. We got to search you for weapons. Uh, hey, Anderson, come on over here and scan this and do that. And hey, sign up for this and sign up for that. And come on into this and come on in. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, but when the Antichrist shows up, he's going to disobey. Don't you worry. Lives in Phoenix, Arizona and the city. But uh, he's he, at heart, he's a he's a militant post-trib prepper. He's, he's ready. He's ready. Him and his wife and all their spawn and everything, as soon as things break down, as soon as that Antichrist shows up, boy, right to the wilderness. He's just going to, seven years out there, they're going to be living great. In it. What a joke. The Bible says that the whole world is going to worship the beast. Where do you worship at? Church buildings. Are you ready to walk away from your church building? Your social club? Your church family? <laughs> How about school? Do you have children in public school? Do you have children in college? Oh, but you can, you can walk away from all that stuff too when the Antichrist shows up, right? Oh, uh, no, because the uh, CPS would show up. Um, why aren't your children in school? See, 
Here's the thing I've come to realize over the years. Post tribbers are all talk. I've met very few post tribbers that actually believe what they profess, that actually put into practice what they claim that they believe. Very few. I mean, hey, I, I'm out here. This is an off-grid property in northern Maine. I live here because it's healthy. I want to get closer to the Lord. I'm not trying to endure to the end of anything. I'm out here because I want to get closer to the Lord. And yet I see post-tribbers and they live in the city. And they're dependent on all the stuff of the city and everything else. And I think to myself, I'm in a better position to survive what's coming than these people are. And I don't even believe what they believe. Or at least what they claim to believe. I wouldn't put my son in school if my life depended on it. And yet some of these people, well, it's just kind of the law. And we just, you know, yeah, we, home, we do homeschool our children, but we have to answer to the government and, and go through the test, testing and the a Becca program. And, the, and, and we, we do have to give an account for what we do and teach our children. And you're going to go into the tribulation and just continue that, huh? Going to go to the government for a waiver form. Um, no, the Bible says in Revelation 13 that the false prophet calls it all, all to receive that mark. There's no waivers. There's no religious exemptions. How about friends and family? Oh boy. The time will come when they that kill you will think that they do God's service. The Lord Jesus talks about turning fathers against children and mothers against daughters-in-laws and your brothers against sisters. He turns the whole family against each other. Do you get along with your family there, post tribber Are you ready to have them become your worst enemies? You go over to a family get-together, just assuming that things would still be somewhat sane. They won't be, but you go to a family get-together and you look and that one's got the mark. Grandpa's got the mark. Aunt Matilda's got the mark. Uh, cousin Joe's got the mark. My brother's got the mark. Dad and Mom have the mark. And you come in and you say, you know, I just don't feel called to take the mark, okay? But I still love you. <laughs> You're dealing with people. As soon as they take the mark, they are guaranteed a place in hell. Guaranteed. And their minds are going to change at that point in time. They're not going to be just the same rational people. Are you ready to walk away from your family and your friends? Oh, but I've been with my, my friend from high school and... And we, we grew up together. We, were, we lived next door to each other and, and everything else. Yeah, they take the mark. you got to walk away from them. You ready to do that? Are you prepared to do that? Well, I'll just be there as kind of a witness to them. You can't witness to people that have taken the mark. How about insurance? Blessed insurance, all state is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of payouts divine. Uh, I'm going to have my insurance there. And when the, 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 the hailstones mingled with fire and blood come down and wreck my garage out there, or wreck my car or whatever else, I'm going to call up the insurance agent. And the insurance agent's going to come out and he's going to say, uh, um, I notice you haven't been paying your policies lately. You say, well, yeah, I can't because you see I'd have to take the mark of the beast and that would be against my religious convictions. And the insurance agent says, uh, okay, well, I'm going to have to report you, but um, what do you think you were going to get as far as a payout is concerned? I'm going to bring over a bunch of survival food for you or something like this? Here's some North Face uh, outdoor gear that you can go hike out into the wilderness, and I won't say anything about it. <laughs> the whole world worships the beast. Not just, they, they're, they're, they kind of like him, they worship him. Everybody will be your enemy at that point in time. Do you really believe this? You say, I'm, I'm a militant post-tribber. Are you really? I'm a militant Christian. My life changed when Jesus Christ saved me. And I live for Jesus Christ. I don't just say, yeah, I'm a militant Christian, but I live just the same way as I used to back in the old life. My life changed. I live a different life now. How about high technology? Oh boy. <laughs> uh, I remember I was on a survivalist forum many, many years ago. And uh, they were talking about what is a true survivalist. And one guy wrote a comment, an ex-military guy, and he said, a true survivalist is a guy that would never post comments on a survivalist forum online. 
<laughs> yep. Um, if you're a real survivalist, you're going to stay away from technology. Uh, you're not going to have a cell phone, you know. I mean, you know, but but again, you post tribbers out there. You got your iPhone, you know, and and you're going to be out there, you know, and you're going to be you're going to be running from the Antichrist, and you got your all your gear, and you got your AR-15, and you got all this other stuff, and you're walking around with a cell phone in your back pocket that can be tracked. <laughs> Are you sure you're a post trubber? Are you really sure? How are you gonna are you gonna live for seven years without ever checking anything online? Can you live without Google for seven years, post tribber? You want me to believe that you're really a post tribber? It's kind of a hard sell. How about personal health? Hygiene and medication. Well, I'm on prescription drugs, but uh Again, there's that waiver. I got to have that waiver when I get into the, the Antichrist shows up. It take, calls everybody to take the mark of the beast, except for me. I'm not taking the mark, but I'm going to still be able to go in and get my medication for my high blood pressure or my diabetes or whatever else. You say, well, yeah, um, I'm going to get, I'm going to get a bunch, you know, I'm going to go to the doctor. And I'm going to try to stockpile my medication so I'll have enough for seven years. <laughs> <laughs> so you, here comes post tribber you got this big old backpack on and walking through the wilderness and you go oh, oh, hold on i got to just uh, oh, take the pack off you know i got it it's time for my pill <laughs> seven years of pills on your back uh really uh do you got enough stock soap stockpiled for seven years you got enough shampoo, you got enough toothpaste, you got enough, you got toothbrushes too, you got to have toothbrushes. Um, you have enough deodorant, you have enough, you know. Are you sure you're a post tribber Or have you been deceived into following uh, a demented, wicked philosophy that says Jesus isn't coming for you? Have you given up hope looking for Jesus Christ? Uh, is he no longer your salvation? I hear post tribbers one of their favorite things is, we're not going to be saved. We're not going to be getting out of this thing. We're not going to just, God's not going to just beam us up, Scotty, or they'll say other blasphemous things about the Lord. We're going to go through it. Christians have been through hard times before, so we're going to go through it. Uh, Christians have been through hard times before at the hands of lost people. The time of Jacob's trouble or the great tribulation, if you want to call it that, is God pouring out his judgment on this earth for rejecting his son, Jesus Christ. Hmm. Why do you need to go through this coming coming time period? I've heard people and they'll say, again, post tribbles will say, well, God needs to purify his church. Really? Dying on the cross wasn't enough to purify the church? Well, we have to have added persecution on yet. So it's Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, and also persecution. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the tribulation. You sure you have the right God? You sure you have the right beliefs? Or have you been carried away with the error of the wicked? And they have you believing something and they're not even putting it into practice. Post-trib pastor sitting there getting rich off of con a bunch of suckers. I'll tell you right now, if I was really a post-tribber, I wouldn't even be making this video. I'd be out in the wilderness somewhere, building some underground shelter or whatever else I could be doing, building, trying to stockpile food into the thing, getting, as soon as I see that Antichrist boy, drop everything, bug out, head for the shelter, and we're going to try to make it for seven years. But you get some pastor and he's there and he's saying, we're going to go through the time. We're going to, it's, it's coming. We're going through it. You can't avoid it. The pre-trib, fib, all this other stuff. And you look at the guy. He's living in town. He's got a cell phone. He's got all this internet personality stuff. He's telling you to submit to the government. He's, all these other things. You're dealing with somebody who is an atheist. They don't believe in God and they don't believe this book. They'll say that they believe the book, but then they don't put it into practice. Let me tell you something. The Bible says that there would be a falling away in the end times. 
that it would be a falling away. Some people, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Post-tribism is a seducing spirit. It's a spirit that says Jesus isn't coming back. Jesus isn't going to take you out of here before his judgment hits this world. That's what it is. It's a seducing spirit that gets you to turn on Jesus Christ. Every post-tribber out there is rejecting Jesus Christ. They are. Jesus said, I am the res resurrection. What is the rapture? It's the resurrection. The dead saints go up first. We which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words, says the scriptures, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. It's a comfort. This list that I gave you here, and there's more stuff that we could go over too that you're going to have to be ready if you're going to go through the tribulation. That list, is it a comfort to you? Is it a comfort to be able to say, or to, to have to think out into the future and realize, I'm not going to be able to buy or sell. I'm not going to be able to have a vehicle. I'm not going to be able to have a job. I'm going to be homeless. I'm gonna, is that a comfort? No, it's not a comfort. It's a comfort to know that I'm going to be looking forward to seeing Jesus Christ. He's the next spiritual thing that I'm going to see. He's the next supernatural thing that I'm going to see. If you're confused about this subject, I would recommend watching some of the videos, the doctrines, the doctrinal teaching on the pre-trib rapture, the catching up before the time of Jacob's trouble. Because right now, if you're a post-tribber, you are deceived and more than likely unsaved. Please take some time to watch those things and pray about it and search the scriptures for yourself to see if these things are so. Thank you for watching.